What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yalla, your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news and the most important candidates with a touch of what, Terence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. How has your week been? Uh, it's been busy, exciting. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of things going on. Uh, every day is news. Yeah. Everyone's talking about elections. Yeah. Uh, finally, I don't feel like that. That you know, that annoying guy who keeps wanting to talk about politics when everyone wants wants to just talk about a Barbie movie or uh, whatever. I when you go into any room and you just like start talking politics. Um, I found that generally people now just like okay la, They're like yeah, let's talk, let's talk politics la. What are yeah. your thoughts? Right? Um. I think, yeah, similar. La. I think it's almost everyone's playing catch-up. I know mm. I'm playing catch-up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know, like, it. it's hard to not have every conversation be about politics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is quite interesting, like, because even the last election, last election was during COVID. Yes. Right? So we never had that that luxury of, you know, meeting up with friends and be and be like, hey, who, who are you voting, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it is, because um, even on the MRT, you know, I yeah. hear people... At the gym, yeah. at cafes, everyone's yeah. talking about it. No, and then I go to social gatherings uh-huh. where people who, you know, that I, I, I meet sometimes, but we don't really talk that much or what. Lah. Like uh-huh. other, my wives, friends, husbands and things like that. Sometimes, yeah. there's, sometimes we see each other, we're like, oh, we just nod at each other, that kind uh-huh. of thing. Now they're like, hey, I saw you in, you talk to Tan Kin Lian, how is that? That kind of thing. <laughs> like this actual conversation started and they start to talk about politics. So I don't feel like the uncle in the room that much. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the elections version of like uh, last time on YouTube, you know, when we used to do some crazy shit on yeah. the road and people were like, oh, bro, you know, you all just did this, that's so cool. Now it's like presidential candidates. Uh. Mm, but, but I mean, this one affects their lives a lot more than our YouTube videos ever did, uh, you know. I don't know. Contrary <laughs> to what we hear about how the president is supposed to be powerless mm, and cannot mm, affect that much change, who yeah. knows? Who knows, Terrence? Who knows? No, I, I'm, I'm saying that last time when people came to talk to us, uh, to us about YouTube videos, oh, yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What nice you watched Oh, well, you all give up your corporate lives to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all, you all even make money? <laughs> 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 ah, yeah, exactly. Steps, yeah. exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah, so so yeah, it, it was um it's been interesting and, and we got a lot to dive into. Yeah. But before that, is there yes. anything you want to say to our listeners? Uh if you're new here, especially and we know a lot of people are new here, whether subscribing or listening to us for the first time. Mm. Uh yeah, it really helps out when you follow, mm. subscribe or like our our content because that helps other people also discover it. La. So yes. that so that you don't have to do the job of going around telling everyone about it. Just a little click of your of your mouse or a tap on your phone and you can help us spread the word about Yala Bud and thinking aloud a little bit more. Thinking putting your, your brain out there a little bit more. Like, yeah. Right? And and I mean, like I checked, we almost crossed like one K ratings on Spotify. Mm. And uh, averaging four point eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you haven't rated us yet, uh, it just takes like two clicks, two clicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if you want to work with us, just hit us up on social media or email us at contact at ministryoffunny.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just realized I have your phone for some reason. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I was wondering before we started, like, where's my phone? But yeah, yeah, why yeah. would I need my phone during a podcast? Fuck, la, Terrence, oh, you, sorry. you put your phone, my phone in your pocket. No, no, no. It was on the table and I assumed it was mine because... <laughs> You know, I, I use my phone to refer to notes. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, correct, no, correct. I looked at it. I was like, "It feels funny. Something feels, feels uneasy. Funny, yeah. Yeah. Feels yeah. uneasy. Yeah. Yeah, wow, yeah. I wonder what else feels uneasy. Yeah, yeah, what else feels uneasy? What else? Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, we recorded our first podcast this week on Monday. Yeah, right. Uh, a lot has happened since then. Mm. Off the top of my head, there was the CNA presidential forum. Yes, uh, that happened on Monday night. Uh, and there's uh, another one tonight as well. Yes, there's yes. another one tonight yes. because we're recording on Wednesday, 30th August, before cooling day. Mm. So if you're hearing this, yeah, it, it came out on Wednesday. Yeah, and for uh, those who don't know, cooling off day is like a mandated. Off, yeah. Yeah, it's a mandated day right before the election where uh, I think there can be no campaigning, whether online or in person, yeah. from any of the candidates anymore. Uh, or even like the people endorsing and all that, you can't actually put up messages about them. But though. can regular people put up posts? Uh Yes, I think so. But if it's found that you have an affiliation to the part to the people running or what, then it, it's a bad look, right? yeah, yeah. So for us, I think given that we interviewed two, we definitely cannot, lah. No, I I think it's still a gray area because I think news media outlets is okay mm. if you're discussing the election. Um, so maybe we fall in that realm, lah. 
I, I would like to think that we fall in that realm. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I know the last election, a certain PAP minister mm. was a... Uh, was had a slap on the wrist yeah, for yeah. posting. He was Vivian Balakrishnan, right? I believe so. But yeah. I think it was online Facebook. Post yeah, online Facebook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's one candidate that we all need like need to remind him to not post anything on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, since this Monday there was a presidential forum, there have been certain like um how you say what is it personal uh slings or mm. personal attacks, but like comments directed directly at other candidates. Mm-hmm. Uh Tan Kin Lian has cancelled his remaining walkabouts. Yes. Uh, anything else off the top of your head that has happened? Uh, I mean, there was a heckler who, mm. while Eun Kok Song was walking around Clemente, yeah. a heckler in a red t-shirt, a red polo shirt and on a bicycle, like, followed him around shouting at him and hurling vulgarities at him mm. and left shouting, Tan Kin Lian! Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. And, and the person who kind of pushed him aside was actually Eun Kok Song's brother, mm, mm, younger brother mm. Charles Eun, right? Yeah. Who yeah. is doing the walkabouts with him, mm, So, right. so I mean, like, how, like, what, 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 where, where is your head at right now? Because I think a lot of people, I assume, are trying to wrap their head around what has been happening, what to think, uh, how to think about who to vote, yeah, uh, what to do, yeah, what to perceive, what to reflect, yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit surprised that mm. uh, Tan Kin Lian Fasi has cancelled his walkabouts because mm. I think remember even in our conversation with him, he was referring to walking around markets and the MRT is a very big big push for him, right? The, mm. the the feedback he was getting from people. So I'm quite surprised that he has cancelled walkabouts. Yeah. And he talked about having a physical rally. Uh, they were supposed to happen last week, didn't happen. It was supposed, then he mentioned maybe it happened this week, but it didn't happen. And I think the latest plans for an online rally also are not happening. Yeah. So I'm not very sure what's going on at camp. They're still giving out flyers. Like yeah. His volunteers are giving out flyers and all, but I'm not sure what happened. Then, um, in the you know in the presidential forum also there's been a, a bit of a disquiet between Tarman's uh, Tarman and Ng Kok Song yeah, right? yeah. about impartiality and all that uh, yeah. which I, I think is, is something that we're going to dive yeah. deeper into right? so, so you watch the presidential forum like live live or after live after after the, after the stream but I watched the yeah. full stream yeah. yeah same and and what do you think uh? Uh, nothing much I mean yeah. other than I mean the big <laughs> Maybe the big moment was only when the host Oteli Edwards mm. uh, stepped in right after Ng Kok Song gave his, his Tang Kin uh, Tang sorry Tang Kin Lian gave bro, his final speech. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> Gave his final uh, spiel. She stepped in and, and reminded the audience what the roles of the president are and what he can or cannot do la. Yeah, yeah, which, which seemed like a, a bit of a yeah. She, she maybe was like. I don't know, through a, a mic feed or something, someone told you're her, hey, on the spot, yeah, you gotta, you got to step in and say this, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, that one was a bit jarring because mm. it was literally, like, before even going to the next candidate, yeah. they flashed a screen that had come up before, uh, which she presented at the start of the forum, mm. talking about what the president can and cannot do. And they bolded one line, yeah. which directly refuted what Tan Kin Lian just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I also watched the forum. Uh, I watched it on double speed because I watched it after... Uh, and I don't know whether it's because of that or not, but I saw a lot of people shitting on the forum. Mm. Uh, and I do think, okay, it wasn't as explosive as what you would imagine presidential forums to be if you compare to the US. Yeah. But to me, it was still way better than the first uh, broadcast, mm. which happened, I think, on 24th August. Mm. Okay. Um, and I, the, the speeches. Yeah, basically. the speeches. Yeah. This one, okay, what, what was annoying was that all the answers, you could see them like hold up papers and mm. read, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's why when Oteli imposed the 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 cut off time, I think there was once that Tarman had his voice fade out because yeah. he couldn't finish in time. But everything else seemed planned before la. But yeah. even then, the fact that all three of them were there, the fact that you could see little little shuffles in their body language and all, mm. I still thought it was it was okay la. Mm. Maybe because my expectations were low la. Yeah. But I saw a lot of people online saying it's boring as fuck. You know, I just feeling sleepy and all this shit. Yeah, not that it needs to be exciting, but um. I felt, what is the point of getting all of them in together in the same in the room? room? Uh, if all they're going to do is just answer one the host questions, they're not mm. challenging each other, they're not allowed to respond to each mm. other, then what's the point of having all three of them there at the same time, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's nice to see all three of them, easy to see, but it, there, there is no, there's no like um, interaction between them whatsoever. To mm. challenge each other's ideas, uh, yeah. which I felt was a waste of opportunity. Waste of opportunity. Um, maybe they don't want it to devolve into a debate, la, right? It's not officially a debate. But then 
what, what kind of forum is this? Like? It's just a mm. Q&A with a, with a, just a time limit and they use technology to censor you. Like how you did that time, remember when you when you cut <laughs> off my, my sound on yeah. this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> they did it like that. That's exactly what they did the Taman, man. There was one person just, okay, okay, it's Taman, like, sorry, okay, yeah. pay you, it out. You otel it me, out. you otel it me before she even did it. Dude, yourself. the nature of this podcast is we otel each other all the time. <laughs> We're debating. Yeah, we're, we're debating. We're having a conversation. Correct, correct. I'm not saying, hey, Harish, okay, now you got two minutes to tell me what you want to say. Oh, I thought you meant like refuting something that the other person said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't, they, they don't want, you know. As in, Otelli did that lah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I, I, can you consider it really refuting? All she's saying is that, Tan Kin Lian, please do not speak out of line. You're not supposed, yeah. the president is not supposed to speak out about government policies. Mm. Like, yeah. Maybe because for me, like after the first one, my expectations were so low, right? Mm. I was thinking that this would also be three of them in three different areas, three mm. different places. Like. Yeah. The it fact that well they were been. in the same room, yeah, yeah, it might as well have been. But the fact that it was in the same room to me was like a slight improvement. Like. Was it, was it, uh, did it exceed expectations? No, but my expectations were like, okay, this is going to be sterile. Mm. And we didn't learn anything new about yeah. them. Uh, that's yeah. for sure. In fact, now the, the challenging and debate is happening. Yeah, now it's more interesting. As a result of what was discussed there. Mm, mm. Um, which, which, which um, yeah, yeah like, like one of the things that has come about was uh, mainly between Ang Kok Song and Taman. Uh, yeah. Because Taman was kind of... Um, Pointing out, I think certain comments he said about okay, uh, hinting at uh, the uh, Avanda asset asset management, which was started by Angkok Song, mm. and saying that if you are uh, a fund that's dependent on government monies, mm. can you be independent? Does that make you independent? And mm. and mm. something along those lines, lah. I think it's to to be specific because I don't yeah. want to to kenapa off ma? No, no, not kenapa off ma, but paint paint it in the wrong way, lah. Mm. Uh, basically. People, I think there was a question of can can you truly have independence if you're affiliated with a political party, right? Mm. Your background. And Tamar is saying, no, I mean, the, the, you, I don't think you should just easily, so easily put labels on people just because of their past affiliations. Mm. And he raised two examples. One, if you're a contractor who's doing your work for a government. Yeah. Or you are a fund manager or a fund investment uh, investment uh, investment funder yeah. that has received uh, state funds, does that mean uh, you are not independent? Yeah. No, you can be independent. That's what the thrust of what Taman was saying. Yeah, like, I have the quote here. Like, let's mm. say you have a private company, you have a construction company that depends on government contracts, or you have a fund management company that depends on government money. Mm. Does that make you not independent? Mm. Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Ng Kok Song mm. read that second example as a direct like swipe at him, la, mm, right? Because, mm. I mean, he runs Avanda Management, which has uh, received investment from Tomasik. Yeah. It's documented. It's all, it's all very well known. La, yeah, right? and what Mr. Ng said, what Ng Kok Song said in response is, he might as well say all Singaporeans are beholden to the government because all of us are impacted by government policies in one way or another. Mm. There is a big difference between being a senior government leader and the rest of us. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, but Taman and, has responded to that as well, right? Yes. Yes. And do you wait? Huh? I, I mean, yes, you have it. You have it. I don't have it. Have it. Uh, uh, but you have it. Lah, I, I will have it soon. Yeah, in in one essence, of my taps, yeah. Taman responded to that saying, th he was saying the opposite of what Ng Kok Song thinks he was saying. Mm. He was saying that even if you receive state funds or whatever, does that make you not independent? He's saying that you can still be independent. Yeah. So he's he's saying that uh he's basically they're they're he's puff mining uh own self puff mining uh, yeah. uh but, song, la, right? But to be honest, when I read out Taman's quote, it mm. does feel like he's almost kind of like uh in support of Ng Kok Song's independence. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because because literally what he said, right, was uh well, my 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 tabs. My mm. my tabs. Um Basically, said, uh, let's say, okay, let's say you have a private company, you have a construction company that depends on government contracts, or you have a fund management company that depends on government monies. Does that make you not independent? Mm. Not necessarily. So he's saying that, does that make you not independent? No, it, mm. you can be independent. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a fund management company that depends on government monies. Yeah. So to me, when, when he said that, I'm like, oh, actually, he's, he's almost supporting Ng Kok Song's claim. Mm -hmm. that he is independent but um, okay so I get it on paper on paper that's yeah. what it sounds like he's saying <laughs> yeah. but the fact that of all the examples you can bring up in the world yeah la, yeah la. the example you bring up is about a fund manager who takes state funding and, yeah. and it's a bit of that 
um, uh, what about what aboutism lah? You know what we, is the what about autism? What about what about autism is like oh you know like when you when people complain about life in Singapore they oh yeah but what about I mean you complain so much about Singapore what about the the starving kids in uh, third world countries and all that you know mm, mm, mm. you know what about them you know you complaining here how about why don't you spend your energy complaining about them mm, instead mm. you know so in some way what Taman was doing I felt was that it was a side swipe lah. It wasn't a direct, like, you know, mm. insult. But it's a way of saying, oh, if you're going to say that I'm not independent, then why don't you look at that guy over there mm. who runs a state fund, uh, who runs a, a fund, fund uh, management firm that has mm. taken state money. Would you say that he's not independent? Mm. That's how I read it. Lah, you uh, know? And that's why... In I, that voice. Lah, in that voice. <laughs> not in that voice. In lah, that I mean, voice. you must imagine Tarman <laughs> saying it. No, what, what did you say? Indian voice? No. No, no. Oh, I, thought, I thought I heard you say Indian voice. No, it's like, fucked <laughs> Yeah, Nonsense. Of are you the hey, racial, the you, racial you lens? <laughs> you remove Steph, the racial you have lens. the racial lens. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I, I, I read it as a, oh, okay, of all the examples he could have chosen in the world, he mm. chose that example of what basically Ng Kok Song's, mm. the criticism of Ng Kok Song is, like, right? Mm, mm, mm. And uh, feels like a bit personal, like, right? Yeah. You're singling him out a bit, no? Yeah, mm. la, yeah. La. That, that personal element is there. La. So, so in some way, it is a, it is a slightly ambiguous statement, Because, mm, mm, mm. like, if we, like you know, especially when the article um says you know Ng Kok Song misquoted me, made sweeping statements because it is on paper on text. Yeah. Uh, you can read it that way, la. And yeah. I can imagine there is a case that Ng Kok Song did take it the wrong way based mm. on what Taman says on paper. Correct. But you're saying like, it's like the 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 next level of passive aggression now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the what aboutism? Uh, if you're gonna say this about me. What about that person, you know? Mm. Um, and, and then I think Tarman also said, oh, let's not, yeah, he's mis, I think he's misquoting me and making sweeping statements, but let's not, let's rise above this uh, tactical fray, la, right? Let's not get engaged in this tactical fray. Yeah. Um, but yeah, generally, uh, Uncle Song quite, quite aggressive, la, I would mm. say, in, in responding to that side swipe. And I call it a side swipe because it's not like, you know, car collision, you know, insurance terms and all that. The, mm. When you go hit on collision, then it's you know it's very clear, it's a very clear crash, like, right? But side swipe is always an ambiguous thing where two cars, their sides swipe each other, mm. and you don't know whose fault it is or who's in the wrong. And oh, all so that, side like. swipe in a, like for cars, it is a term. Yeah, yeah, car, car insurance cars, thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those people who, you know, you get an accident and if your two cars swipe each other on the side, mm. it's a very grey area on whose fault it is, and a lot of times like you can dispute until the end of time and you won't be able you end up probably having to split 50-50 and all that. Mm. So that's why I felt this was a bit of a side swipe. Like I could read it both ways. Mm. Like, Taman maybe is right or maybe Ng Kok Song is right. But yeah, that's what I thought about it. But what what mm. do you think about uh Ng Kok Song's response and all? I mean, yeah, la, like like um Ng Kok Song uh, it's basically like what what you said la, that that it does it does kind of uh, imply or hint that uh, it it's pointing to him la. Mm. Of course, that is an extension la, You know, it's an extension. It's like when someone says something that you know is directed at you. Yeah. But you can't really point it out because people can be like, oh, but being you sensitive. didn't say it. Yeah, yeah. you're being sensitive. sensitive yeah. So now on Cox being sensitive, <laughs> is it? <laughs> they make sweeping statements. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he said on our podcast, right? You know, like um, for the younger generation, you know, sometimes you have to. You have to work hard, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. You have to, you cannot be so, I don't know whether he said you cannot be so sensitive. I don't think so. Don't be but, lazy. Uh, don't, don't be lazy. lazy. Don't be lazy. Yeah. But in some way, it is refreshing uh, to see this sort this sort of like... Sparring. Uh. Sparring. Uh. Mm. Yeah, which which is what would be fun to watch if it was happening on the forum itself. Yeah. And I say fun not to trivialize it. It mm. is because one thing about the both of them, which is a question we asked on Kok Song also, right? You say mm. you're independent when you're working at GIC. Was there an instance where you rose up against the people you report to to push mm. back against something that they wanted? La? Yeah. And in this case, them pushing against each other is important. Mm. And it's important to see how it pans out. Yeah. Right, because we don't often see that. And that's the one biggest question about the two of them, right? Mm. Tan Lian, you know that he will poke, he will probe, and he will just be annoying. La. But for yeah. the two of them, we haven't had any proof of that. Right. Yeah, uh, right. of, of, of Especially Taman, no one has asked him that. Mm, mm. Right? Yeah, and, and I think... Uh, yeah, it's a very good point that mm. um, I'm, I'm also glad that um, the gloves are coming off a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, because I do, I mean, this is meant to be a contest. Mm. And uh, you also want to see them, I mean, rather than just talking about friendship and love or yeah. talking about how they met their wives, 
I also want to see them compete a little bit. And 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 if it means also pointing out the deficiencies in the competition, yeah. that's all part of, of a, a competition, right? Mm. Like when Pep Guardiola manages Manchester City, he's famous for like studying tape of his opponents, locking himself in a room for like hours and then coming out with a perfect strategy on how to attack their, their weaknesses, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Rather than just focusing on how great your team is and all that, which is very much what has been going on, I think, for the Taman side of things. Look at how great Taman is, you know, his mm. track record, everything. But we really have not uh, heard anything, him say that much anything. No, not say, say anything bad, lah, but you say, like what we say, push back yeah. against the can- the other candidates a bit more, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I kind of want to see that because... I've been thinking about it also, like, like so what so what if we've interviewed uh these presidential candidates on a podcast? Like, what was the value of what our conversation with uh the two the two candidates are? Mm. And I felt what was important was that we had a chance to sit in a room with them, ask them a question, they give us an answer, but we can at least ask one follow-up question, push mm. back a little bit on that, and mm. see how to respond. Because that's how life is, right? You have a com- when you have a conversation with people or in work meeting or something. You say something expecting people to agree with you, but mm. they might not agree with you. And mm. then how do you convince them? So that that gave, I think you and I gave both of us very good insight into how someone like Tang Kin Lian or someone like Ng Kok Song would work within the team, how he would talk to people who work with him, how he talk to people when they disagree with him and things like that, mm. like, right? Mm. And that's what people got to see on our podcast, which I think, <clears throat> thankfully, a lot of people appreciated. And they have come up to us and said, said, oh, I really appreciated the way you guys framed the questions and all. Mm. Because we didn't just like, oh, okay, Ang Kok Song, you got two minutes to answer your, the question. Mm. Okay, thank you, Ang Kok Song. No, mm. we don't like that. We got, okay, you ask a question, we, we push back a little bit or, answer, or ask a follow-up question or something. Mm. And that's that's the kind of, that's how you really see a person's uh, character and really understand how they behave in different kinds of, kinds of situations, right? Mm. And, and uh, yeah, that's why I, that's why I appreciate that they are now sort of like sparring a little bit, lah. And the good thing is they are sparring about stuff that was said in a public forum, mm-hmm. as opposed to bringing up some personal attack or some mud slinging, mm-hmm. Which which I mean, it's fair game, right? They're not doing anything unethical. Yep. They're just challenging what each other said, which should be uh the way that these sort of things are discussed, lah. And that's why. Imagine if that had happened during that presidential yeah, for, yeah, forum. Correct. So they would have whew, miles ahead in, in terms of like, not say enjoyment, but in terms of people appreciating what it was meant to be. Like, yeah, right? but then suddenly like it goes, I mean, that's the fear, right? Which I think for for CNA and Straits Times, it sucks like, that, they, yeah. that they don't, that they can't go, that, go to that place. Yeah. Because that's what I think everybody wants to see. Mm. Which is why I still think that for the next contested election, uh, we should pitch that show that we have spoken about before mm. where to pick a presidential candidate you basically open it up such that 100 people can apply mm-hmm. and you put them all on one of Singapore's islands yeah. and you film them for 6 months yeah. and you do it pay-per-view mm-hmm. and you make it a reality TV show that is funded by the pay-per-view yeah. and you get your best candidate President 100 la. yeah President 100 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Imagine all the challenges that you can put them through mm. to really test their character, you know. Yeah. Test yeah. their girl. And that's where maybe someone like Tan Kin Lian will shine because he's a man with a good heart, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um it also I mean, watching this also, it's mm. kinda of made me uh think about something like um generally Tarman's team or Tarman's PR team or whatever has played it quite uh positive, la, right? Mm. Quite safe. Mm. Rise above the tactical fray and everything, like, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that approach so far for him? Uh? Um. Okay. So personally, I feel it is doesn't feel real. Mm. Like it's a bit mm. too polished, mm. Mm. and it almost feels like oh, it's again more of the the that one feeling that we know of, la, mm. which is where okay everything is well intentioned. Uh, articulated well, mm. uh, but what is that person really thinking? Mm. And what, mm. what 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 is what is actually Taman uh, thinking, or what is his team thinking? And that's where I feel there's a bigger disconnect now than ever before, like, When it comes to him, like personally, mm. Mm. yeah. But for you, uh, yeah, I'm feeling. I was always, I was wondering earlier this week, like, why is it that, like, that I'm feeling so a bit unsettled about Taman's campaign? I mean, he's a great candidate, you know, funny. I thought the jokes he made about about online and, and, and seventh month and all that, if you've seen it, it's, it's basically someone 
I, I think I've spoken about it. I can't mm. remember I spoken about it. But someone asked about the, is it the pineapple or the Ong Lai? Is it about getting Ong Teng Chong's spirit back and everything? Then he's like, oh, you know, this is seventh month, so let's not like invite any unwelcome things that we don't want, you know? Mm. So I thought that was that funny. And, and he's so charming and everything. But it seems almost like such a huge disconnect from what people, um, you know, regular people are feeling about everything in Singapore in recent times, right? Uh, rising rising rent, can't get housing, uh, you know, can't... Um, cynicism. Cynicism in mm. general, uh, uh, anxiety about the future, anxiety for children's future, political scandals and all these things. So almost like having this whole positive, positive, I'm here to, you know, for friendship and love vibe to it, feels almost like, almost like a slap in the face of anyone who's worrying about these things. Uh. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, you feel that? Uh? I feel that, yeah. Uh. I, I, it seems so disconnected about it when, when I feel like, and maybe that's where Tang Kin Lian is really tapping into this anxiety that people are feeling. Mm. And really the only one who's talking about the negative things, uh, right? I, I would say generally, Tarman and Ang Kok Song have been talking about optimism for the future and everything, like, right, you know? Mm. Um, whereas Tan Kinian's message is very much like, okay, there's a lot of things wrong with the system and we need change, like, right? Mm. And that's what, that's what's so, uh, that's what's fueling this, this, this uh, feeling of uh, disconnect from, from what people are actually worrying about out there, mm, like, mm, right? Mm. And obviously we can say, yeah, that's not the, that's not the president's role to, to, uh, to enact policy or make changes and all that. But it is the president's role to inspire people to to look uh look past to acknowledge these problems, but also how to how will we grow from them mm. and, and look past them and all. Mm. But it almost feels like those problems are not being addressed or discussed that much with Tarman side of things. Uh, you yeah. know? So I I that's where I, I was like, oh, um, okay, I get the strategy that you guys want to just focus on the positives and we have a lot of good to look forward to in Singapore but how do you convince those people who are suffering now right? Yeah. that that they should need to look past all the pain now to, to look forward to that future under you Taman actually that is a good point because I remember watching the forum and generally across their messages mm. uh, yeah Ang Kok Song and Taman are more about building the the best possible future mm, mm, right mm. whereas Tan Kin Lian is almost like okay we have a present that is not so good mm. let's try and fix it la. and I think even broadly, like so when these articles tried to summarize the themes across the three of them for the presidential can, uh, forum, uh, Ng Kok Song is like caring across communities. Because mm. he said, you know, like the president should be the chief volunteer. Mm. Um, Taman was finding common ground. Mm. You know, be it like internationally, locally. Uh, I think he said there's there should be less cultural tolerance or ra racial tolerance, but more integration. Mm. Whereas Tan Kin Lian, like what you said was very much about we have these problems now to solve, we need to solve them. Mm. Which in some way it is yeah, it's closer to the reality. Yeah. Uh and and I guess that is yeah, so 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 that's why during the forum, I actually thought like um Ang Kok Song was was the most middle ground la, where mm. he did talk about certain issues we need to solve. Cynicism. Yeah, cynicism. You, yeah. But also talked about the a, a positive future. Whereas Taman was like all positive He's future. All positive. Tan Lian was like, now it fucking sucks. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to come in and fix <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So then you listen to him, you're like, oh shit, yeah, it really does suck now. Taman mm. is like, oh, oh, Kumbaya in the future. Whereas Ang Kok Song is like, okay, it... It's not the best now. Yeah. Uh, it's a different time now. But we also ha have the chance to build a future. Yeah. So, so after watching that, I actually thought, hey, Ng Kok Song uh, gave the points within those parameters. He did pretty pretty well yeah. uh, for me. La. And and I think what you said is true. La. It's almost like the future and even their policies towards reserves, right? Mm, mm. You know, Ng Kok Song and Taman are like, okay, we will not drain the reserves un unless absolutely necessary. Whereas mm. Tan Kilian is like, we spend now. Spend, is he necessarily saying spend now? No, he did say like if it's worth drawing down the river reserves mm. to reduce wealth wealth inequality now, mm -hmm. uh, make lives easier for the current generation. Mm. It is something he wants to look into, I, uh, and he said oh, yeah. that on our podcast. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so I mean, maybe not to that extent, mm -hmm. uh, but it it felt like for Ang Kok Song and Taman was like okay, it is all about keeping our reserves for the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah, I just want to make sure we're not saying that Tan yeah. Kinian was advocating to drain the reserves or anything. Okay, not yeah, drain yeah. the reserves. No, but no. He's saying that he wants to, like, for example, he wants to know the exact figure in the reserves and how 
is being spent and that he feels that there's wastage in areas like, right no and also something yeah. about like the current generation yeah, yeah, the yeah, problems yeah. we are facing mm. and potentially looking at that aspect also yeah. like, which is something we haven't heard the other two candidates say like, I don't even know whether that's the most prudent thing to do mm. but I think what you said about him tapping into what people are feeling is super powerful like. or yeah I, I, I think obviously I and I think we talked about it when he was here so uh, in some ways, maybe he is overstating what the role of the president mm, is, mm, right? Mm. But if you don't at least show that you acknowledge people's pain and people's suffering, right, and acknowledge that it's a very difficult time, uh, if you don't acknowledge those things, people feel like neglected, mm. you feel slighted. It's like, he's, yeah. it's like you're in that kind of relationship where there's a problem, then you tell your partner, and your partner says, no, 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 there's no problem, there's yeah, no problem. Right, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, it'll be okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And then you just keep saying, no, no, there's no problem, even though you keep bringing up that there's a problem. Then after a while, you know, the, the other person, the other party in the relationship will feel very like, I'm not, I'm not, you don't assure me, right? You don't, mm. I feel very slighted and, and you don't assure me, you just ask me to have blind faith, you know? Yeah. And, and that's the, the part that I'm really not feeling that much from the, the Tarman campaign. Uh. And, it, and it's sad because it's not a new sentiment that has been expressed, not just by us, but... Mm by a lot of people in Singapore, like, you know, mm. that, okay, we, we can talk about the future and you know, what, like, the shit that's happening now. Mm. And it's also sad for, for Taman's campaign because he started off, like, he's universally loved and respected, yeah. like, right? Yeah. Uh, I think he's the one individual, one politician that even the opposition parties have respect for internationally. Mm. But yeah, the disconnect, which is the fear like, of, the, of someone from the incumbent, the PAP, mm. also exhibiting that and not addressing it, yeah, that's that's disappointing, lah. Yeah, and I think there's some articles, and 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 I think Kirsten Han, the activist, also mm. posted about the comments that he's been making about the LGBTQ community, um, and also about you know the statement about whether Singapore is ready for non-Chinese PM, and even the lorry, right, the transporting the yeah, migrant yeah, workers, the, in transporting the, in migrant the, workers, in the lorries, yeah. Uh, I think people wanted answers to those things, and what we heard back were more of like, okay, more of what we've heard from the government, the P, the PAP-dominated dom government so far, which is, you know, society, we need to move slowly to to make sure these things are, are ca you know, cal Dealt calculated with, yeah. carefully and all that so we cannot take big steps. And uh, it seems like, you know, the, the people who are a bit more like on the left end of the political spectrum are like, mm. are, are a bit frustrated. Like that, that means it just sounds like, uh, you yeah, you're basically, it's more of the same, like, right? It's mm. just basically that, he's in the same uh, he agrees with whatever has been done for the last 20 years on these issues mm. and he doesn't see a need to change it like, right yeah uh, and then for example the okay then and then the whole non-Chinese PM thing I think Kirsten Han was the one who pointed out how come now that you're running for president suddenly Singapore you can say so readily that Singapore is ready for non-Chinese PM then how come when we were when you were in cabinet and everything when these things were being said by his colleagues in the cabinet how come he didn't make a stronger stand against it? La, as as probably the most prominent non-Chinese uh minister out there, la, right? You know, mm. who, who everybody seems to love and want to see as PM so la. Mm. How come he didn't make more noise about it? But then now suddenly he's out of the government and he's saying he's saying it so loudly, la, right? Mm. So yeah, people are pointing out that hey, is it really you, you speak of independence of mind, but uh yeah, the your words and your actions are, are they showing that independence of mind, la, right? Mm. But then, but then that one also is a bit, is a bit tricky for me because okay, I think mm. at the core, mm. I'm still like while I understand in theory what the president can do, mm. there's been so much fuzziness, right? That even now the role of the president is confusing. Mm -hmm. Um, and because like like um for, and I think it shapes how I view what they say lah. Because yeah. Let's say we take the approach that the president really can't effect that much change policy-wise, which is what is in the constitution, mm. right? Uh, then, like, does it matter how much they they want to push or be like extreme, extremely liberal about certain policies? Mm. Uh, of course, you can argue that that if that's their mindset, it will reflect in other ways, mm. like, Even Halima, she was quite vocal about certain issues in whatever platform she could voice her opinion on. Mm. But I think, like, 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 um, and. And and so so that's one thing about the role of the presidency. The second thing is to Taman's detriment, I guess, is even though what he's saying, it might be the best cause for it. Mm. We don't know. Maybe these kind of things, rather than uh, certain democracies where you speed ahead and it results in more divisiveness, 
mm-hmm. maybe taking a more calculated approach might make the most sense. But the way it's being communicated is the same way other things have been communicated from the government, mm. which is where we know we should do this, and you either follow or too bad. Mm. Like, like, like the disconnect between what they feel and what people are feeling is very, is very, is too big a gap, lah. Yeah. Because even like him saying, you know, these kind of things need to be um, taken with caution and all. Of course, the campaign, the hustings period is very short, but it just feels very familiar. Mm. You know, they say something and we just have to accept it. Yeah. Yeah, and and that is the core of like why there's that like I think like what you say like that unease with whatever his campaign is projecting la. Yeah. 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 Hasn't been uh, hasn't been like that's why Inspiring. I mean Inspiring. Yeah, I think uh, one comment that I saw that was quite interesting is that we haven't had like a Barack Obama, mm. you know, the speech at the you know, in Berlin that he made, for example, that kind of thing. That mm. kind of moment where the world set up and like, wow, this guy is inspiring. We, as Singaporeans, we haven't had that. Mm. Maybe small snippets here and there. Mm. But in general, there's been not been this grand sweeping vision of what Singapore will be will be like with him as the president. Mm. Sure, a great representative of the country out there, a great statesman and everything. But how are Singaporeans going to be inspired? Right? Mm. Uh, have you felt it? I, I mean, I, I haven't felt that that moment has arrived yet. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not banking on it also because I feel it's one of it's a nice to have lah. Why? Well, what's a nice to have? That, that, that kind of inspiring moment. But isn't that what the president is supposed to be like for the people, and and inspire the people and all that? Uh, yes and no, but I think the inspiration can come in many ways lah. Of course, the speech is like a nice moment. It's a social media friendly thing, and it's in that moment, but. Inspiring can come in other ways also. La. But I mean, but that's the whole point of campaigning. The, yeah, you, want, you want that. You have this short period to mm. really state very clearly why people, or at least why, mm. why you are the best choice, basically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just haven't like seen it or felt it or anything. Maybe maybe the lack of rallies, the lack of there being like grand speeches that they can yeah. deliver to a, a, an adoring crowd, yeah. that, that also makes it worse. But I don't know, yeah, just in general, his whole campaign, I, I've just felt like he's, he's been speaking to different pockets and different groups of people, uh, not us, but different groups of people. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just saying things that like what you say, la, sound like what has been said before, la, right? Yeah, yeah. And just like, oh, okay, la, just more of the same. La. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, that's why like right now, I think the last podcast also we asked ourselves, do you know who you're going to vote for? No, no, not yet, not yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm also, I'm also not, not fully sure yet. Not la. fully sure yet. Um, like I, I think as much as we are criticizing Taman's campaign, uh, I mean, like basically overall, I feel that all of them have their pros and cons. Mm. Uh, but it's just, it's just very unsettling, like that. Yeah. That is that there are these concerns, especially for someone like Taman, la, who yeah. started off at such a high, uh, like level, yeah. and then now it just feels like. Hmm, He's the best person for the job. He's overqualified. He's so good. He's he will make a, a great present for any country. But his campaign so far has just been like very yeah meh to me la. Yeah. yeah meh. And and I mean I'm not I might not be the person that he needs to convince or anything like right because because mm. I I obviously am very sold that he is like a great a great yeah. states person la, right yeah. and a great representative yeah. of Singapore. Yeah. But uh yeah la, his his campaign just has been kind of like flat la, so far la. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, I think a lot of talking points have been coming forward from Ang Kok Song. Initially, mm. Tang Kin Lian, now Ang Kok Song is coming, coming a bit more to the forefront. Yeah, like right? the news articles the past few days is a lot on Ang Kok Song. Uh. Yeah. A lot yeah. on Ang Kok Song. Yeah. Who knows, uh, Scully, I mean, conspiracy theory hat on Scully, that guy in the, yeah. in the bicycle. <laughs> the the where's he from? <laughs> Who is, who, which, where's he from? Even Tang Kin Lian came out, his, his team came out and said that we've never seen this person before. <laughs> I was just thinking that, <laughs> like, wow. what's up? Plan, it's uh, a, a power, a power move. Uh. Conspiracy theory, <laughs> uh. okay, just a joke. Uh. Yeah, a yeah, everybody, that's just a joke. Just uh. a joke. But where but is it this got man? Buzz. Yeah, it got buzz. People watch. I mean, I was watching the video. People. Yeah, and now I know Ang Kok Song has a younger brother who is walking yeah, about with him. Walking around. Ang Kok Song was not. He was not razzled by this. By this. Yeah. Uh, heckler. 
you know, he got the strong man thing. Like, oh, pass, like, you know. oh, Lord, Lord. Oh, who's, who's Who other, is that guy? Who else has, has gotten this, <laughs> has had this moment? Not, none of the other candidates. Suddenly, that's why we see like, uh, like Tamun is doing a chokehold on another, <laughs> another protester. Tangkilian is like in an amba or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, love it. But, but yeah, I think if, if, if they're going to do it, like, do it sincerely. Like, don't go and pick don't go to drains that and pick out That is gutter politics. Yeah, right, that, yeah. Literally, don't go and pick that, leaves out from the gutter and all that. Yeah, yeah. That is gutter politics. That is gutter politics. Like, yeah, know. yeah. If anyone is wondering what I'm talking about, it's like, I think you can Google the history of it. Like, there was a candidate who was running in years past who he went around as his walkabouts, like doing things like picking out leaves from from like clogged. Oh yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering what what uh what reference was that? That was, a, that was from like a I think the by election for. After was it Michael Palmer or what? Lah? The by-election, oh. yeah. It was a that cool, wasn't cool, a cool. bonding incident, right? No, no, no. Separate, separate. Uh, bonding, the bonding, the, separate flooding, la, the no, flooding. No, but this one was just, yeah, la, when you do things that people feel like, hey, please la, don't wire. Yeah. yeah. It actually can have the reverse effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, <laughs> uh, you know, yes. so, yeah, right now I think the, the you know, the, it's a lot of people are saying, yeah, la, there's the, the diehard fans of Tarman who will, 100% vote for Taman. Yeah. And, uh, diehard fans of uh, Tankin Lian who are, who are all diehard fans of the anti-establishment yeah, rhetoric yeah. who will vote for Tankin Lian, right? Um, but yeah, uh, speaking of which, yeah. our next topic <laughs> I almost is forgot also, the next topic. <laughs> is also <laughs> about the only fans yeah. who will pay for something, right? Yeah. Okay. what is this topic about? <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, I set it up. I set yeah, it up. you set it up, man. Yeah. It is the the news which seems like totally like from a different planet given how much politics has taken the, the front and center mm. is um an ex-teacher who has become an OnlyFans creator who has divided netizens. Mm. Um, yeah, so her name is Chanel Yui. She left her role as a secondary school teacher last year, 2022, mm, mm. to pursue cosplaying, streaming, and even only fans, mm. and found the stripping, in air quotes, in her own words, to be cathartic. Mm, mm. Um, so, so yeah, it was. Um, but I mean, there is some some people who say that uh, well, you know, MOE and NIE need to improve their vetting of future teachers. Mm. Uh, Teacher to sex worker is quite a jump. We can blame it on the economy or the dilution of values. Money talks, I guess. Mm. Uh, just remember, easy money comes at a cost. Don't get angry when you're in your 30s, single, and men treat you like shit. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, yes. So, so what, 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 what do you think, Terence? Uh, I, I guess the big question is, that, is there a problem with a teacher becoming an OnlyFans creator, la, right? I don't think so, la. I don't think so. And it's an ex-teacher, la. She yeah, quit as an ex-teacher. Teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess maybe people are thinking that, oh, if she became OnlyFans, maybe she was in a, in a teacher, mm. uh, teacher time, she, she, like, had these, these desires, really, la. She did reference that, that, uh, a lot of times, it was very stifling, la, right? Yeah, in yeah, a job correct. where, she was told to take down, certain posts, and things like that. Yeah. Which I can imagine if you're someone pursuing a hobby like cosplaying and all, uh, it could come up like where people are like, hey, you're, you're, you know, in the workplace, they're like, hey, you cannot, you cannot post this picture. Like, what if your students or students' parents see it, like, right? Mm. And then it's a big issue. Like. But do, do you see any, any merit in the argument that, hey, you know, like, at one point you were dealing a lot with children. Mm, mm. Let's say primary school, like, okay? Yeah, Hypothetical yeah. scenario. Let's say primary school or even kindergarten, mm. and a few months later you are stripping online. Uh, okay. Can you see any merit to the argument? Hey, like, if if she ended up doing that, chances are when she was teaching, maybe she also had the same thoughts. Wow, that's what stripping for what the kids. I don't know. Uh, that's a bit of a stretch, lah. Right. Okay, it's like yeah. you know, like let's say when people. Um, found out that okay, we are doing this full time. Mm. Some of my my friends, no, not maybe not friends, or family. They're like, hey, but you become a comedian. You've never been that funny, man. Mm. Then I'm like, does it matter if I wasn't funny last time? Mm. Uh, I can still find comedy and shit. Yeah. But then I think there's this expectation that oh, you leave your career to pursue something that you have always had an interest in. Ah, uh, yes. And if you have an interest in something that is like stripping online. I, I mean, I don't have any issues with people who, who are only fans. Yeah. I'm just thinking from the perspective of, let's say, a parent. Mm. Is there is there any merit to it? Because, I mean, you're a parent. Yeah. Let's say you find out that that's uh, your like swim instructor for your uh, kid. Yeah. It, it turns out he's like he or she becomes a stripper after that. Okay. Or a porn actress. 
or okay. a porn actor. Okay. Do you look back? You're like, oh shit, that must have been weird, or is like totally like totally separate for you? I think it's totally separate. Uh. Mm. I mean, teaching is a profession. Mm. Uh, you know, being only fans creator is a separate profession. It's mm. like jumping from one workplace, one job to another, mm. and it's not like it's not like she. I, I mean, maybe the only the only thing is if she uses. The whole teacher thing teacher. as part of her resume <laughs> yeah. in the OnlyFans. Oh, right? I thought you meant like she's like in her OnlyFans, she's like in a classroom and shit like that. No, yeah, I'm, I'm saying oh, that, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, where, okay. where it's all about that. But from what I understand is she's mainly about cosplay and, and things like that, like, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's not, it's, she's not using her past background to market her OnlyFans career, right? Mm. So I, I don't see a big issue with it, like. And, mm. and actually, even if she does... It's like whatever like, because it's a different. She's catering to a different market. Like right? those people on OnlyFans are not the the kids that she's teaching in school. I I mean I think I hope not. <laughs> yeah. You should not be having an OnlyFans account if you are still in primary or secondary school, like, right? Uh. uh. But yeah, so it's uh. Can, I mean I I don't think like like Tankilian saying like, who are we to judge like, right? Like how can we judge mm. uh the, her her actions for whatever they are like, right? Yeah. Like. I mean, I also think there's there's no issue at all, uh, yeah. uh, because that's that's almost assuming that she cannot separate the two, like, Even if she was uh having like that sort of interest, uh, and maybe not yet an OnlyFans account, yeah. but that sort of interest with teaching, if she can separate it and be yeah. an amazing teacher, yeah, that's totally fine. Right? Who I mean, do, does everybody really bring every part of themselves to work? Mm. No one, right? yeah, they don't. You you might have certain interests that you just don't don't show at work and that's totally fine. Right? Yeah. So do you think it's okay? I mean, we just uh, go away in the timeline a bit. Like. Do you think it's okay for a teacher, a secondary school teacher to also be a cosplayer at events? Like? While teaching? Uh? Yeah, while teaching. And you know, cosplay, there are some costumes that, that cosplayers wear and all that can be a bit more revealing, revealing or you know, things like that. You know. Wow. So would that be okay? Or would you... For you a know, secondary school teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want a bit. Hmm. Not very clear to me, sir. Yeah. Mm. You? I think it's it's a much trickier thing already, la. Why, yeah? Um, because yeah, the I think definitely parents will be asking, like, right? What? Uh, how are you? Are you encouraging our kids to you know dress up like you and all that? Because you are you. By default, you are almost like a, a role model or example to the to the kids uh, of what an adult should be like, right? Or an adult can should can be like. Mm. And um, not not saying that they were all object to you know a, a cosplay or what like that, but uh, if they if they want to do it, I think it needs to be upfront like, to the parents that all oh, this teacher uh, does do this cosplaying thing outside. And then if know. the school says oh cannot, is that wrong of the school? No, no, that's why I'm saying that if the school wants to be okay with it, if the school wants to continue, they have, I think to, they have to also, I think, uh, come, and not say come clean, but like, just be, 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 up be front open and upfront about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like every, like one out of every three parent-teacher meetings, the teacher has to do it in their cosplay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Know, maybe she just has to keep bringing it up every time when the parent teachers think, yeah. oh, you know what happened to do cosplay or so and yeah, your, yeah. your child shows a lot of interest I don't know that, that's where like I, like if any teachers are listening and you have some very like you disagreements or agreements because like I think even holding teachers up to be role models for kids is a mm. is a big ask right, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, like you don't get that for many other jobs mm. you can still be like an asshole and do great at many jobs yeah but for teaching, there's almost this added responsibility like, that you have to be like morally upstanding uh, yeah. to teach, like, which is also like, hmm. Yeah, but like, let's say, okay, let's say, let's find something even more innocent. Let's say you are a teacher, but you also enjoy DJing, like, you know, in bars late into mm. the night, like, right? Mm. You think that can be, that could we pose any problems? Yeah, and you're still doing your job as a you're teacher, doing your job, like, you're not, you're yeah, not, I think yeah. it's fine. Anything's fine. Yeah, are you? Uh, I I guess because there's no like, uh, you know, skin being exposed or anything like that. I think it's okay lah. Yeah. But skin being exposed, let's say they are a bodybuilder where they take part ah, in in like muscle shows where they wear really skimpy stuff like Both yeah, men yeah, and women to show like. muscles and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one got any issue. Right? It's a sport. Right? It is a sport. It's a sport. It's like it's like you you can be a swimmer. Right? To be a swimmer, you have to wear a swimsuit, right? Oh, true lah. Right, it's a then sport. Then pole dancing? 
Ah, okay. Then pole dancing. Then that's, that's where it's Because like, we have interacted with pole dancers who are very, very clear that the, the sport is not sexual. Mm. The activity is not sexual. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it is sexual in some ways. Mm. Or, or at least it seems sexual. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, I know that can be a very polarizing thing also. But yeah, if the teacher, guy or girl, mm. is a pole, pole dancer. Uh, then maybe it's just ma- about a matter of whether how public they are about it, lah, right? Because yeah. I, I think cosplay by just it has to be, you know, a public thing, lah, right? You know, people w- looking at your creation and everything, your cosplay creation, and seeing you in public and mm, mm. hanging out with other people and you know talking about costumes and everything like that, lah, right? Mm. I think it's a community thing, so there will inevitably be public, be yeah, public appearances on it. But all those other things we talked about, whether it's you know uh, being a DJ or or uh, body uh, not bodybuilding, but but uh, what do you call it? Pole dancing. Pole dancing. Mm. You can kind of still keep it private, lah. DJ you how? Um, I mean, you just don't appear. Don't don't tell people, and just don't appear in photos, lah, as much as possible, right? But cosplay, let's say you have a mask. Ah, okay. Then maybe it's not so bad, already. Right? So it's about like hiding the face, lah. Yeah, hiding the face, lah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a this is a yeah interesting topic. But I mean, we know that teachers, it's quite it's it's really quite strict, lah, like, in terms of moonlighting yeah. and stuff like that, lah. Like, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that they we already know that that's the extent that they are not allowed to do a lot of things outside of work, lah. Like, right? Yeah. Uh, but now we're just talking about hypothetical situations that if we wanted to allow them to mm. do certain activities, mm. what activities are okay and what are not okay, lah. Like. I don't know whether there's a protocol, or no. Maybe there's like there's this like. Like informal protocol, okay. If you are a teacher, yeah, especially for kids of a certain age and below, yeah, don't do this kind of stuff. Like, I don't know, yeah, 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 yeah. But only fans, definitely, I think it's a uh, very hard, like, right? The overlap, at this no point, like, the branding yeah. of only fans is a bit hard, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you think about it like 10 years ago, um, you know, when you post something on Instagram, everyone would be like, hey, why you post that kind of thing, you know, mm. but now it's like. Instagram is just oh, really, like, uh, like 10 years ago people would, would say that uh. no I mean if you're in any kind of job they'd be uh, like hey you, you know you got to be very careful of what you oh, post yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. social media Instagram you can go oh, yeah, 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 now it's right. like Instagram is like whatever like, just post in fact, before you you interview someone also you'll <laughs> just go look them online LinkedIn, yeah, you're Instagram, more likely you know? to check them out on Instagram than yeah. any other and if platform. they don't have Instagram then you're like hey, that's wow. weird <laughs> yeah, who yeah. is this person yeah, yeah. Mm. you can have Instagram but yeah like, just don't don't like it's not all bikini pics or whatever, lah, right? You know, mm. and then you apply for a job. Okay, this is a normal person, you know. Wow. Whereas if you don't have Instagram, you're like, hey, what? What are you hiding? Like, what's so strange about your lifestyle? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so it, these yeah. things evolve over time. Maybe ten years time, we're like, oh, okay, lah, only fans, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you this... don't have only fans, ah, Terrence. <laughs> Terrence, you don't have only fans. Oh, this person apply for a job. Let me go and look him up. Only, only fans. fans oh. First. oh, yeah. So, so sometimes we wear clothes. Oh, interesting, ah. Huh? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But fits well with our culture. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah, I mean, if if anyone's listening, teacher or not, and have some thoughts, please head on over to our Reddit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, we love the discussions that happen over there. Yes. And now. Uh, what is your one shook thing? Uh, one shook comment. Sorry, one shook. My comment. one shook comment. Uh, okay. So um, it's a it's a comment from uh, Internet uh, Lurker ninety six mm. mm. on our recent podcast talking about Tan Ching Bok endorsing Tan Kin Lian. Yes, and uh, I mean they they took the time to really put down some very detailed thoughts uh, mm. uh about um Tan Ching Bok endorsing Tan Kin Lian, especially how public it was. Mm. And and they basically kind of like um, went down about the thoughts about their overall campaign mm. and uh, the discussions between Tan Kin Lian, Taman and Ang Kok Song. Yeah. So, so yeah, kudos to to you guys that, uh, I mean, to, to Internet Lekka 96 for sharing your thoughts to such level of detail. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, like, it's just their thoughts on, on the topic, not really challenging anything that anyone else said. Mm. But I appreciate people sharing that much. Lah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, speaking of sharing that much, uh, Proco uh, also commented on our, our podcast about the Fukushima nuclear mm. wastewater being released. Mm. And this is a very interesting perspective. Allow me to clarify a common mis- misconception about salmon imports in Singapore. Um, and this and this person is a, is a salmon importer, him or herself. <laughs> yeah. Who is a salmon importer? 
contrary to what some might think, which is us, I think, uh, a significant portion of the salmon we enjoy isn't actually from Japan. Eh, hey, contrary to you, I oh, mentioned, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mostly imported from Norwegian farms with a small supply of Pacific salmon coming from Canada and Australia. So all this Norwegian sourced salmon actually goes into our restaurants, whether it's budget-friendly or upscale, with different handling and grading to set them apart. Uh, and, you know, yeah, he just talks about how farmed salmon is more sustainable than, uh, you know, fishing and all. That's why, that's why uh, I mean, it's, it seems to be the bulk of salmon in Portsa. Mm. So apparently even Japan, with its rich fishing heritage, actually imports fresh Atlantic salmon from Norway due to the challenges of meeting demand with their own uh, wild-caught supply. Mm. So this is the global nature of the salmon industry. I hope this insight helps correct the misconception about our salmon imports. As someone actively involved in bringing this sought-after seafood to our tables in Singapore, I'm glad to share this accurate information. P.S. I'm not from or associated with sake sushi. <laughs> <laughs> so that was on YouTube, is it? Yeah, it was on YouTube. Oh, yeah. power la. So yeah, I mean you... Fuck it's, yeah, salmon importer. I love it that someone heard our, all of the misconceptions <laughs> that we had about, or at least I had about uh, fish and well, uh, has... Come out and puff oh, you can imagine how right much now. they were <laughs> seething. Uh, like, what Cringy. the hell are these guys talking about? <laughs> Look at this idiot. Like, yeah. not going to eat salmon for like three months because so of how, this. So, there now you can, now okay lah, you... Salmon okay. Yeah, salmon, 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 salmon okay, back okay. to uh, salmon. So, yeah, okay. I mean, what I, I was asking people is they're like, oh, actually, yeah, Japan, actually, they don't eat that much salmon. Mm. To say they eat other tuna fish. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuna. Salmon actually not so much. Actually, so tuna right. imports. Any tuna importer out there? <laughs> tuna importer. Yeah. Uh, what other kind of fish? Yeah. Tuna, uh, swordfish yeah, importer. Yeah. Yeah. So just come on over to our YouTube and Reddit, yeah. man. You, we will use an AI and then replace all mentions of salmon with tuna yeah. in, in our <laughs> podcast. And yeah. then, we, then we wait for the tuna yeah, importer. Wait. <laughs> it's like fishing. La. Yeah. We just put the bait out and then the, the, the respective fish importers come. Yeah. But yeah, I think sweet. it's interesting. Uh. There, yeah. there are people, salmon importers who are listening to us. And, oh, you know. sweet, man. Yeah. Sweet. All right, cool. Cool. And now, on to the one shook thing. What mm. is what is your one shook thing, man? Uh, My one shook thing... Uh, Actually, you have yours first. Yeah. Just pull mine up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so over the weekend, I just watched this movie that had been popping up on my Netflix feed a uh, couple of times, which I was like, oh, it seems interesting, but I finally got a chance and I watched this... Yeah. Oh, sorry. thanks, Darren. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank yep. you, Darren. This is the opposite yes. of the presidential <laughs> forum. Uh. Instead of fading me out, you play music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, it's a called the Old Guard. Uh, ah, you, okay. Charlize Theron. Char- Charlize uh, Theron. Yes, yes. And like, it's based on a comic book. And I found the premise quite interesting. Like, it, mm. it, there's a story that follows these four immortals mm. uh, who are led by this uh, character played by Charlize Theron, who's like a 6,000-year-old immortal yeah. who's fought in like multiple battles over the centuries mm. and millennia. And at this point in time, they just lead very low-lying lives. Like, and they are like the last resort for like special forces to go in and like rescue hostages and all mm-hmm. that. But they try and remain out of public eye at all costs. Like. But mm. the movie starts when they discover a fifth immortal, mm. a new immortal, which hasn't happened for the past hundred, few hundred years. And also they realize that someone knows their secret. Mm. and it's out to hunt them down. I see. Uh, so it's a movie. Um, there's already a sequel in production. Mm. Um, and I just thought, okay, it's it's not like gangbusters, like uh, it's special effects and all. I just thought it was a it was a f- nice nice premise and it was decently decently made. La. It's for Netflix. Uh. Netflix, Netflix. Oh, I yeah, yeah. So I, I would recommend, it's not like, wow, one of the best movies I've seen, but I really like the premise. Mm. Uh, there's a few very disturbing scenes that touches, that has a different take on immortality yeah. and how depressing it can be. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's just cool. And Charlie Theron, like her action sequences all powers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's like the Liam Neeson. Uh, mm. equivalent right yeah, for, yeah. for women as well yeah but but yeah that was my one shot thing oh, that's cool uh, I, I do want to watch it like, this show it's mm. been on my list or too damn, too damn long really mm. uh, my one shot thing is uh, a preview of a game that I saw recently called Robocop Rogue City mm. so it's an open I think it's an open open world game mm. where you get to play as Robocop oh shit uh, the first person shooter uh. so what's interesting about the gameplay from what I understand is that you know how first person shooter usually you're running around jumping around shooting and, and very agile yeah. and everything because this is Robocop it's not about jumping around running around being fast it's about like you basically like walk slowly around and you're like trying to sh- kill the enemy before the enemy kills you like, with, with bullets. Uh. Uh. So it's a very plodding, slower style of uh, 
gameplay, even though it's a first-person shooter, where it's about, you know, uh, what weapons you use to negate this particular enemy and things like that. No? Mm. So it's a, I mean, it's a throwback to the old days. The, the first Robocop. Robocop, wow. Robocop oh, you know, that, you know that, that big classic. machine. Yeah, that, yeah. And the extreme violence that those those, those series of movies had, la, right? Yeah. And they're now putting it in a game where you get to play as Robocop. La. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, so it looks fun. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we this is our final podcast before the elections. Yes, before cooling off day. Before and, cooling and, off day. Yeah. Uh, and then, but we will be back right after the elections. Yeah. To just talk about what what went down. What's the future of Singapore, la, Right. Yeah. What's the future of Singapore? And yeah. and yeah, I mean, hope hope our podcast have been useful. Yeah. Vote wisely. Uh. And yeah, we the next time we speak to you, we will have a new president. Yes. It'll be a new chapter. Oh, it'll be a new president. Yeah, Excited. sweet. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.